So today I want to talk a little bit about, uh, well, let me, I'll give you my background. So last year I was invited to speak on Emerge, and uh, what I spoke about was the villages of Mississauga. So I created a website, and uh, I marketed myself through talking about different neighborhoods. Generated me a lot of uh, business online, and it went over really well, because I noticed when you come to a presentation like this, it's really easy to say, well, if you do this, you can generate a lot of business, or follow these steps, and guess what? You know, you're, you're, you're gonna double your income. The challenge is, a lot of times we talk about the tools or the methods that we do it, however, we miss the mindset of, of why you do it. So it's, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good tools out there and there's a lot of things you can do in order to increase your business, but what I found, at least in my experiences, without having the mindset behind it, sometimes you'll go and do it and you won't get the results that you were promised or maybe that other people are getting. So before I start, I just, by a show of hands, how many people in the audience generate business online? Not including realtor.ca sign calls, or digital sign calls as I call them. So you actually do something online and you're able to generate buyers or sellers, okay? How many want to generate business online? Okay, that's pretty good. Now one thing I'll say too as a disclaimer is that um, I'm not a guru up here. And what I mean by that is I know my website says the village guru. What I'm telling you is based off of my experiences. However, if what you're doing works, don't stop it, okay? So there's not one way to skin a cat or whatever they say. But by, I think by going through this presentation, it can help anybody whether you're, you're doing digital or you're doing traditional offline marketing methods. So in my agenda, we'll, we'll talk about facing facts. I'm glad I'm here in Oakville because I'm, I'm from Mississauga. But when you go around the country, you realize there's a huge difference in the different real estate markets. So, you know, as all of you, if you're all from around here, you realize when we're dealing with buyers and sellers, the challenge now is I need to buy a house. And a lot of consumers are like, oh, my house will sell. Sure, we can add value and, you know, help them that way. But they're really not worried about that. But when you go to other communities like Kingston or the Sioux, it's the exact opposite. They need help selling because days on market are 90, 100 days, 120. So it's not like what we've experienced here. But at the same time, I think hopefully you'll get where I'm going a little better and I don't have to explain it as much. Next, I like to, you know, hopefully shift your mindset when it comes to marketing. I'll talk about the evolution of my story quickly and how I went from the beginnings until where I am today. I'll touch on outbound versus inbound marketing quickly. And then finally, we'll talk about story-based marketing because just like Annette's presentation and like Richard's presentation, what, I, what stands out to me is about telling your story. So what, when people are telling you in every different way, I just keep on hearing, telling your story, telling your story, because that's really what's key for us. So I have three goals today. First is to shift your concept of marketing. Um, a lot of what we're told about marketing is an incomplete story at best, and at worst it keeps us going down the wrong path, spending a lot of money, trying to figure out how to do things right, if we ever do. So hopefully having a shift in your mindset will start you on the path to the business you want to build and, the mar and generating business the way you want to market it. Second is to help you feel more empowered. So when I started in real estate close to 10 years ago, I thought this was going to be easy, seriously. I thought I was going to get my license, call a couple of friends, list a couple of houses, and, you know, we'll start rolling. And I don't know about you guys, but I soon realized it wasn't really that easy. But what, when, I, when I started, you know, I did the traditional things, and in my last presentation, there'll be a link to the video, I did a lot of the traditional things we were told to do, and it didn't jive with me. So I had to figure out really quickly, you know, how was I going to generate leads? How was I going to do something that went with my you know, what I'm about and my story. And so I had a kind of a shift in the mindset. And finally, we're talking about leverage because with the, the techniques I'm gonna tell you, you're able to leverage yourself in order to generate business even when you're not working. So again, back to traditional techniques, without a system in place, without a mindset to marketing, you can knock on doors and that door knocks done. Or you can cold call and that call is done. But by doing things properly, you can hopefully leverage yourself in order to create more business. So first we'll face facts here, and I'll read it. Real estate is a highly competitive and labor-intensive job that can wear you out and take over your life if you're not that strategic about it, okay? So I know we all have probably got up on Sunday and went to show a house because, well, there's 100 other people who will do it if you won't. But the fact is, if we can manage our business properly, 
you know, we can take control of this. Now, challenges in our industry. I don't know about you guys, but there's too many agents out there. Does anybody agree? Really? Yeah, exactly. Um, and the problem is, it, well, it's not really a problem because the top 10% are always going to do the business. So if you have a good business, you don't really have anything to worry about. But the problem is, we all look the same. So if someone doesn't know who you are and you, you're simply identified as a realtor, then you're identified with everybody else in the industry. So the more agents we have, not being negative, but there is something called the law of supply and demand. As more supply is there, but the demand doesn't go up, it can cause a push down in prices. So I don't know how anybody else's business is going, but I've noticed a lot more competition lately, which isn't a bad thing though. The next fact is the public doesn't like us. Now I don't mean us as a person, but us as a, an industry. So you can Google uh, surveys on Reader's Digest, uh, top respected professions in Canada and least, perfect, per, uh, least respected professions in Canada and realtors show up at the bottom, okay? So we're not trusted. People think we're working in our interest a lot of times and it's just something we have to realize. So while we like to, the general marketing out there is to market you constantly as a realtor, um, realize that that's not what turns the public on and I think even the panel said it. It was more about personal relationships and what you do. And finally, I, I find we're too focused on tasks and numbers and I know this is opposite of what we're told, but I think by putting lead generation down to simple numbers game, well, if you make this many contacts, then this many people turn into leads and then they turn into clients. We're treating our clients like commodities, which is exactly the opposite of what we don't want them to do to us. So it's fine to have numbers and business goals, but at the same time, we really need to go back to our story because that's gonna generate a lot more than we think. Does that kind of make sense so far? Cool. And then finally, we fail to build our brand and our story. We rely too much on big brands. We rely too much on uh, looking perfect to our clients and to consumers out there, and it's not really what attracts them to us. It's actually our story and what makes us different and what makes us not look like everybody else in our market. So in order to shift towards a marketing mindset, I'll go through this real quick, is to learn about best practices in other industries. So if you're thinking about marketing, um, if you're gonna do a new campaign, if you're gonna do a new way of marketing, Stop looking at all the people in your marketplace because we're all doing it the same. Look outside the industry to see best practices because a lot of other industries are way more ahead than we are when it comes to marketing. And I'm going to give an example outside of our industry that will hopefully tie this in. Obviously, standardizing your uh, customer service uh, you know, procedures will help you along the way. So taking care of the back end, there's no use in marketing and getting clients if you can't you can't service them, right? If it all falls apart, then it's, you know, it's gonna make you look bad eventually. And finally, realizing that you are the secret to your success. So when I, again, when I started, I used to look at all the top agents in my, in my marketplace and be like, well, what are they doing? You know, and I realized that the best way is to actually be me, and that would generate, and I would grow that way. So you are the secret, and what, what you're about, everybody has a special story to tell. And get honest, get vulnerable, and get personal. Okay, so I, I truly believe that the less perfect we are now, I'm not saying we look, you know, not to look bad or anything, but at the same time, perfection, it, 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 I don't think it, it relates to people. And when Annette had that slide up about uh, all the TV shows, the HGTV shows, like my wife watches all of them. But if you notice, they're about real estate, but are they really? Are they about the interpersonal relationships that get people to watch like flip or flop constantly? That's what they really love. So it's not the finished product, it's actually the husband and wife or the team and the bantering going on. So it keeps us coming back. So think about that. I know it's a little different than our personal businesses, but if you can capture that in a bottle, you're well on your way. So here's the evolution of my story. So when I first started, I didn't have much uh, success doing the regular things, so I started building websites. And the websites, they revolved around giving people information, which was okay, it was better than what most people were doing. So six, seven years ago, you could do not a lot compared to today and get online leads because most people weren't doing it. But then what I realized is it wasn't working. And then as I, I started to do video blogging and, and that kind of got a little more personal and then that's when I came up with my brand, The Village Guru. But in the beginning, seriously, it was all about neighborhood stats and how many sales and blah, 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 blah. And what I realized, no one cares. 
at least not until the day before they buy or sell, and then the day after, they totally forget again. Again, because we're talking about real estate stats, which is really dry. So yeah, so this is what I came up with. I started doing the videos, the neighborhood uh, blogging. I started getting involved in my community, which was amazing, Rotary Club, uh, community groups, and that really, that really pushed my business up big time. So touching on outbound versus inbound marketing. So outbound is the traditional, you know, you can send out flyers, you can, you know, you can do bus shelters, all that typical stuff. Or we can focus on inbound, which is attracting people, listening, in order to attract them to like us, to start following us. Because one of the big things, if you look at NAR stats, the average buyers, they start looking online, and even uh, Jennifer, about 12 to 18 months ahead of time. So the problem is they can come to you, they can contact you off an open house or you know, a sign, a flyer, your website, but if you have nothing to engage them for the next 12 months, they're gonna forget who you are and you know, you're gonna lose them in the pipeline. Now you can do drip emails and things like that, but still, if they're generic, they're not gonna get you the results you want. So again, it's about your story and bringing them in. This is an example of a funnel, and again, talking about traditional outbound marketing, and Andrew Foliato is a really expert at this, who spoke this morning, so definitely if you ever have questions, um, he's a definite guy to do, but I just like to show the, the general overview of how we bring people in, and then and they kind of funnel in as they, they come through the funnel. So buyers, again, take a long time. Sellers are a little quicker, but still, you gotta look at the long term. It's not as simple as, well, if they contact you today, it doesn't mean they're ready to go. In fact, that's a very small percentage of them. And the gold is in the long-term leads. And again, this just shows you more of a, what, a, what a, a poll marketing would look like. So you're attracting and converting people, and you're closing them, and then you continue to delight them in order to create the circle again, get referrals, things like that, which we all love. And when we're talking about inbound marketing, these are just different examples of you know, how to create inbound marketing. In my uh, breakout session, I, I can show you what I do online to generate business and what I found is, is uh, successful and what I found has not been successful for me. So now we're gonna talk about your story because that's the most important thing. We can tell you how to hack Facebook, make an ad, you know, do whatever, but if there's nothing making you look different than everybody else, it's, it's not all for naught, but it's not gonna be the results you want. Because there's a lot of companies out there now, I'm, I don't know if you noticed, they dominate, like, they're not even realtors and they're pulling the leads, they're trying to sell them back. So, I mean, it's hard for an individual person to uh, dominate that. So, I used to do a lot of SEO, for example, and I always wanted that keyword, Mississauga Real Estate. I wanted to show up on page one of Google. And I got to the top of page two, and I realized, am I ever gonna meet, beat Remax Ontario Atlantic? No, they, they have the funds, the, the resources, but instead, go after the small, the long tail keywords, the things that people are looking for. But anyway, so, Two story, I'm gonna give you an example, not real estate related, although there are some good ones, but uh, I'm gonna go offline for a minute. Has anybody heard of a person called Jocko Willink? Nobody? Oh, cool. Okay, so Jocko is a guy who, uh, he was in the US Navy and he retired from the US Navy and he decided to become a business consultant, okay? So, you know, he has a lot of experience leading people, it seemed like a logical choice. And uh, so he started that, that job, just like a lot of us, we had previous careers and we decided to get into real estate for a number of reasons. So like real estate, consulting's highly competitive industry where there's no physical product. There's nothing to compare except us, okay? Same with us. And uh, consumers can sometimes have a hard time, you know, differentiating ourselves. And like real estate, all consultants are not the same. So. You know, there's speakers that'll charge a thousand, there's speakers that'll charge fifty thousand dollars to come sit on this stage. I mean, we're all ultimately we're all talking. But what makes us different? And it's the same in our business, right? We can all charge different things, we all provide different services. But the problem is the consumer, still, without knowing you, may think we're all doing the same thing. And again, I just touched on that point. So what he did was uh, he wrote a book called Extreme Ownership how the US Navy SEALs lead and win. Now, what I'd recommend is you Google this guy's name, okay? Not, not cause it's actually a pretty cool book. It's got some stories about uh, battles in Iraq and you know, he was a Navy SEAL. So it, it's pretty exciting, 
But more importantly, you want to look at how a guy decides to become a business consultant and ties his past into what he's doing now. So he just doesn't meet you and say, yeah, I'm a business consultant, you want to hire me? No, he's, you know, you're like, this guy's a badass Navy SEAL, he's, he's done all this, and everything is tied back into his experiences, which you don't have, and any of his competitors can never match him, because everything starts off with, I've learned this through battlefield-tested techniques. Well, it's cool. Like, if you like that kind of story, he all of a sudden rises to the top in your mind without ever meeting. So he writes a book. He also has a podcast, okay? Um, where, you know, he talks a lot about his experiences, leadership, military, but he's created a huge following. And then finally, he's got a website. And if you go to the website, it looks kind of cool, but it's got the same services we offer, except he's got coaching, um, you know, leadership uh, conventions. But for us, it could be buyers, sellers, you know, that kind of thing. But the bottom line is you're coming to him through the other channels that are telling the story till you finally get to where his services are. And this is a guy who went from, like, again, I don't know him that well. I just found him through podcasting and things like that. But, I mean, in a number of years, he's become a celebrity. He's really known in the business. But does he know more than other business consultants? I don't know. There's probably people who have more actual hardcore business experience, but they don't stand out to anybody. Their story is not different than anybody else's. So when we talk about, so this is, a lot of this I'll go through in my breakout session. But to give you just kind of a bird's eye view, and then I'll leave it, and, and if you're interested, please come by and we'll, we'll talk more, is when you look at marketing, you should always come up with your story first. So instead of just going out and spraying and praying and doing stuff, really figure out what you want to be known for, figure out how you're going to engage, and then you build everything else off of that. So you have your story and your service, and your story is what's communicated through your blogs, through your newsletters, through your social media, through your community. It should have a theme. That way, there's always something strategic behind it, and it's always working in your favor. Once you have a story, you already have your service. I'm sure everybody here is excellent at what they do. The story is going to feed into the service. So like I said, people want to see your stories. They don't really want to see about your service unless they're ready to use you. So again, our job is being remembered a lot of times. So it's how do they remember us with our story? OK? And then finally, once you have that set up, that's when the advertising comes in. That's when the ads, because they're going to feed into your story or other lead generation. So um, a, a nice young, do I have any, how much time do I have left? Two minutes? A nice young lady in Kingston just started real estate. And she came to the breakout session, and she, I don't have a lot of money, right? Because, you know, it's hard. So I said, what do you do? And she goes, I like to door knock. So I said, okay, so you go in your door knock, and I'm like, what do you do? And she goes, well, nothing. I, you know, I have a script, and I, you know, my name's so-and-so, and I work for this, and are you looking to buy or sell? And I'm like, that's great. But chances are 99% of people aren't ready to buy or sell, or chances are they know somebody. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but do you have any way to pull them into your story? She goes, well, what do you mean? I said, is there something to have them sign up? Maybe to receive listings, maybe, maybe to receive something like that. Get them to a landing page where then you can start communicating your story to them so they remember you over the next couple of years. And that's what I mean by telling your story and, and being strategic about this. But anyway, we will get into that in way more detail in the breakout session. And finally, this was the presentation I did last year. They videotaped it. Uh, the domain's thevillageguru.com slash leveraging your specialty online. Sorry about the long URL. URL. You can also go on YouTube and just Google or YouTube the Village Guru Emerge. It should show up. But if you're going to come and you have some time, take a look at it because that's where I talk about actually what I do on my website and uh, how I built the whole system online. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed.